So, this lecture is on thermal properties of clothing. Let us first see what are the various factors that affect thermal behavior of clothing. A list of factors are given here. If we read these factors, the first one is dry thermal insulation. What is the insulation value of the clothing in dry state? In wet state, the clothing insulation value will change because we all know that water is a good conductor of heat. So, that will change the insulation value of their clothing. So, dry insulation is important. The second is transfer of moisture and vapor through the clothing. The third one is heat exchange with the clothing and the heat exchange means what? Conduction, convection, radiation, evaporation and also possibilities of condensation. All are very, very important for understanding the thermal behavior of clothing. Another factor which is important is compression, compression due to high wind, especially if we go outside and if the wind is blowing, so wind is going to compress the fabric and with compression we will see later on how the insulation value can change. Next is pumping effect due to body movement as, as the as we move with the clothing that is in a dynamic state what happens that there is a billowing effect of the clothing that is what is important. Another interesting factor is air penetration through the fabric, through the vents, through the opening. See you have our clothing, where well, there are many multiple openings are there and some of these openings are adjustable. So, therefore, through these openings the air can always enter. So, there is the exchange of the environmental air and the air which is next to the skin. So, the air can penetrate always depending upon where those openings are and uh, that could be some vents like collars. If they are not tightly buttoned, the collars are acting as a vent. Similarly, in the shorts also we have certain openings where it is acting, it will be acting as a vent. So, the openings are through the openings there is a possibility of air exchange and the penetration of the air. Even if the fabric that has been used to make the product or the clothing, if it is very thin in nature or very open type of construction is there, there also the air can penetrate if the wind is blowing. So, all these can also affect the thermal behavior. And then comes the subject's postures. So, the postures the person is going to take, there could be some pressure on certain parts of the clothing, and therefore, there could be change in thickness, there could be change in the openings of the fabric also. So, the postures of the person is also can affect the thermal behavior. So, there are these are the relevant factors which will affect the thermal behavior in the intrinsic insulation of the fabric itself. Then many things depends upon the, uh, the way the clothing has been designed and the other factor is basically the way the person is going to work with the clothing. All of them will affect your thermal behavior of the clothing. The next is clothing model. In a stationary state, in a comfortable posture, 
let us look into it. So, here there is a diagram on the right hand side. You see what we are showing in this is there is there is a this one rectangle that we see is a body and the blue part that we seen in this case is the clothing layer and the heat flow has been depicted here by the arrow. Heat is flowing from the body to the environment in this case that means the environmental temperature is less than the body temperature and T core, T S K, T C L they indicate the temperature. T core is the temperature of the body core, T S K is the temperature of the skin, T C L is temperature of the clothing. T A, T R, B these are the parameters of the environment. We will gradually come to know what are these parameters. For the body to maintain thermal equilibrium, heat flows to the skin from the core part of the body and that will determine the skin temperature. Then it will also flow through the insulation to the clothing surface. So, clothing is acting as insulation because clothing is contact with the skin. Therefore, from the skin it will flow to the through the clothing to the surface of the clothing and that will determine the clothing temperature. And then from the, the clothing it will go to the environment. So, that is how the heat is going to flow. So, for a continuously heated body like human body is continuously heated due to metabolic heat production, a dynamic equilibrium is maintained such that what core body temperature will be greater than skin temperature, which will be in turn greater than the clothing temperature, which is in turn going to be more than environmental temperature. So, in this case we are assuming that the environmental temperature is less than the temperature of the body core or the skin. The clothing temperature is greater than environmental temperature is a proof that the boundary air layer provides some insulation. Point is why the clothing temperature is more than the environmental temperature. That means, the very adjacent boundary layer of air next to the clothing is also helping to improve the overall insulation value of the clothing. The property of this boundary layer is therefore, important for us so, and that is what we are going to now discuss further. Intrinsic clothing insulation, intrinsic basically means it is the property of the clothing and represents resistance to heat transfer between skin and the clothing surface. It is the intrinsic property of the clothing material. Now, the rate of heat transfer through the clothing is how many different means which you have studied probably in your you know, uh, physics courses also that, that it could be through by conduction which depends upon the surface area and also depends upon the temperature gradient and also depends upon the thermal conductivity of the clothing. So, whatever heat is lost through conduction that depends upon surface area of contact, temperature gradient and thermal conductivity. So, intrinsic clothing insulation is reciprocal to clothing conductivity you all know that conductivity and insulation are basically reciprocal to each other. Let us understand the what is the unit of insulation. The unit of insulation for clothing material is glow. 
So, what should know what is this clo means? Gage proposed clo unit, clo replaces the physical unit with something that is easily visualized and related to the clothing worn by human. So, clo is the insulation required to maintain a resting man producing 50 kilocalorie per meter square per hour feel comfortable in an atmosphere of where the temperature is 21 degree centigrade and humidity is less than 50 percent. Air movement is also very, very low 10 centimeters per second or less. That kind of environment, the clothing material that a person needs to feel comfortable. So, a kind, in a kind of this is a kind of subjective assessment that the person feels com comfortable if I ask the person to stay in such an environment where the temperature atmosphere is 21 degree centigrade, relative humidity is less than 50 percent and the air movement is very, very low. So, in this situation what is the minimum clothing that he needs provided he is himself is producing 50 kilocalorie per meter square per hour is the heat production. She should feel comfortable. So, that much clothing material is called one cloth. One cloth then people have tried to relate it to the actual insulation value. So, one cloth is equivalent to 0 0.155 degree centigrade meter square per watt, where meter square term represents the surface area of the human body. Now, one interesting point to observe here is that a necktie worn may have a thermal insulation of 0 0.1 clo, while the shoot mate of the same material as the necktie may have an insulation value of 0 0.8 clo. Why? Because a necktie is going to cover a very little area of the body, whereas with the same clothing material if I make a suit and cover a larger part of the body, then its clo value is going to increase. So, clothing value is related to the dress material or clothing and depending upon how much of the body is covered by that particular garment or clothing, the clothing value of the garment is decided or it depends upon that. Clo gives an estimate of insulation as if clothing were distributed evenly over the whole body. Now comes thermal resistance of the environment that is the air layer. If the environment has perfect conductivity that is no resistance let us say the surface temperature of the clothing would be that of the environment, because surface temperature of the clothing, surface of the clothing is in contact with the outside air. So, therefore, we would expect that the clothing surface temperature and air temperature to be same, but that does not happen. The environment offers significant thermal resistance that basically means that the boundary layer of air is actually giving certain resistance. So, here is a body and the heat flow is there is shown and the body is nude as if there is no clothing on the person. In that case, what is the thermal resistance of the air? T a indicates temperature of the air, T r is the mean radiant temperature, P is the velocity of the air. T s k is the skin temperature 
T core is the body core temperature, these are the values, symbols that has been representing these parameters. So, thermal resistance of air which is I A is 1 upon H, where H is H R plus H C. What is H R? Radiative heat transfer coefficient and H C is convective heat transfer coefficient, sum of these two H R and H C. So, I A is insulation is reciprocal of conductivity. So, I A is 1 upon H and H in term is basically H R plus H C, where they are the heat transfer coefficients radiative and convective. Now, when this body is covered by a clothing layer, you look at the picture on the right hand side, the same body now the blue part is indicating there is a layer of clothing. So, thermal resistance of the environment with the clothing layer. Now, by putting a clothing around the body, what happens? The surface area of heat transfer is going to increase. You remember whatever is the surface area of a body part when it is naked, if I cover it by another some layer of fabric, the surface area is going to increase. And therefore, total surface area of the boundary layer of air around that human body or clothed human body is going to be more now. So, let us say F C L indicates clothed surface area of the body divided by nude surface area of the body. So, closed surface area is always little more than the nude surface area. So, it is always going to be more than 1, F C L value will be always more than 1. So, thermal resistance of the air in this case is going to be I A is going to be 1 upon F C L H, that is 1 upon H was earlier. Now, because now the layer dimension has changed, the boundary layer air dimension, since the body has become little you can say fatter because there is a layer of clothing now. So, thermal resistance is 1 upon F C L H. So, 1 upon H is I A that is insulation value of the air without any clothing. So, I A of the clothed state is going to be I A by F C L. And what is F C L? F C L is the ratio as has been stated earlier. Point is how to find out F C L. So, there is a formula which has been given by this researcher and it states that F C L is 1 plus 0 0.31 I C L. This is an empirical relationship that is F C L is 1 plus 0 0.3 1 I C L. I C L is in clo and I C L is the clothing insulation. Intrinsic clothing insulation is what I C L. And therefore, if I know F C L, I can find out what is the I A value, insulation value of the air when the body is clothed. So, what is happening if we say look at this? F C L is basically always more than 1 because F C L is 1 plus something. So, always F C L is greater than 1 and therefore, I A in the clothing state the boundary layer of air which is there is insulation value is going to be less. F C L is more than 1, so I A by F C L is going to be less than I A. So, by putting a layer of clothing around the body, the boundary air layer resistance is going to decrease, because surface area has increased. Total insulation and effective insulation, let us now come to this point. 
clothing insulation and insulation due to air these two when you add up we get total insulation. So, total insulation is insulation due to air plus clothing insulation. Sum of these two is going to give you the total insulation. That means, I T is I C L plus I A clothed and therefore, it is going to be I C L plus I A by F C L as we have seen what is I A in the clothing state is. So, by determining the value of I T, I A, I C L can be found out. If we want to find out what is the clothing resistance I C L value, we can find it out if I know I T and I A experimentally, which is done with the help of Mankin. However, determining F C L is less accurate, hence I clue is determined. What is I clue? I clue is I T minus I A. This is because this F C L value, this is is bit difficult to determine accurately. So, the formula which is there, it is an empirical formula and therefore, not sometimes very accurate. So, if you ignore that, then I T becomes I C L plus I A. Then what is I C L then? It will be I T minus I A, but we call it because I am not taking into account the F C L value. So, we call it not I C L, but we call it I C L U, I clue. So, I clue is the insulation value, total value of the, of the clothing when the F C L is not taken into account. I clue therefore, is called effective insulation of garments that is insulation calculated without taking into account the increased surface area due to garment. That means, I am not considering F F C L. F C L is basically indicating the increased surface area due to the clothing. So, if you ignore that, then whatever value of the clothing that I calculate knowing the value of total clothing resistance I T and only the air layer resistance I A. The difference between these two will give you the resistance of the clothing that is and that will be known as I clue value. Now, this I clue value also people have tried to find out by doing experimentations and then uh, trying to you know, find out some empirical relationship. So, one of them is as stated here according to ISO 9920-1995, this is the equation which has been given another equation, this equation when converted into clo value, then we get this same equation. If we want to convert into clo, I have to divide it by 0 0.155. Another equation has been stated like this, I clue is 0 0.43 to the power minus 2 A covered. This A covered is something which is coming here. A covered means what? the body surface area covered by the garment. How much body surface is covered by that garment is? It overall will cover almost entire part of the body, whereas a glove is going to cover only the palms. So, there are various types of garment and the body area they cover, they also will vary depending upon what that garment is. The next equation 6 says that it takes into account both the percentage area covered A cover 
and also it takes care of the thickness of the fabric. See the previous equation 5, here the fabric thickness does not play any role in deciding the clothing resistance. So, this has been taken care of by the next equations where the thickness value of the clothing has also been taken care of. These are the empirical equation that people have found out and they are also used to find out an initial estimate of the, the resistance value of the clothing without doing the real the measurement. For garment ensemble, when a person is, is wearing various types of garments together, we can find out what is the overall insulation value of the ensemble, how I C L for garment ensemble is sum of I clue I that is the I clue value of the individual garment. So, person may be wearing inner clothings, may be wearing one shirt, he may be wearing on the top of it some more uh, jackets or sweaters, trousers, socks. So, if I know the I clue value that is effective thermal insulation value of the garment I or that may be 8, 10 garments that makes ensemble. If I know the individual values, simply I sum them together, I get the total insulation value. Here is a table where the ICL values in flow unit and in degree centigrade meter square per watt both the units are shown here. These are some standards by ISO 9920. So, they have measured a number of combination of the ensemble and given this value and this is going to guide us when you are trying to design an ensemble for a person for a particular environment. Let us say underpant, boiler suit, socks, shoes all put together somebody is wearing the clo value will be close to 0 0.70. Then if it is underpants, short, trouser, socks, shoes, shoes all, socks, shoes, trouser, then value is going to be 0.75. So, like that it is stated here as an example, one can get some detail or detail many different combinations of, you know, are there and uh, they are available in this ISO 9920. So, we see that different combination the clo value keeps giving here it is in increasing order. Let us see if we go for a value like 2 clo value then the person is wearing underwear with short sleeves and legs, short trousers, jacket, heavy quilted, outer jacket overall socks, shoes, caps, gloves, if entire thing a person is wearing, in that case the clo value is going to be 2. So, this is basically sum total of the individual clo values of these garments. Similarly, in the other here is individual garments clo values are stated. Underwear, different underwear that corresponding clo values are given, shorts or blouses, different types of shorts and blouses their clo values have been given. Here trousers, dress, see clo values just to get an idea these are the standards which have been given by the ISO and we can get some idea about the clo values of individual garments. Similarly, sweaters, jackets, values are given. Let us say, let us say sweater, the clo value would be typically around close to 0.28. Not much details are given, thin sweater 0 0.20, thick sweater is going, going to 0 0.35. So, sweater has been classified into three categories, thin, 
normal and thick and values are 0 0.20, 0 0.28, 0 0.35. Nothing details are given here ki what is the material that has been used whether it is wool or whether it is polyester or it is a blend. Some typical values have been given and we can get an idea that if we use a thick sweater typically values of cloak would be going to be 0 0.35. For jackets also similarly some clothes values are given. So, different types of clothing and their clothes values are stated in this table like socks let us say clothes value is 0 0.02. So, socks also has certain clothes value as you see in the winter we prefer to wear a long socks a long size is going to cover larger part of the leg, but in summer we are going to use short socks, ankle height socks because we uncover. So, that the heat exchange between the skin and the environment is faster, we do not want to increase the insulation value. So, socks also different types of socks and their corresponding the glow values thick ankle socks is this much, thick long socks 0 0.1, nylon stockings 0 0.03, shoes thin sole is around 0 0.02, thick sold is going to be 0 0.04, boots could be 0 0.10, gloves could be 0 0.05. So, these tables will give you some idea and if you are going to design an ensemble for a person, these data is going to help us to design the ensemble. So, I can pick and choose different types of garments. If I know the individual clothes values, I simply add them together and find out this is the total clothes value. Okay. Now comes influence of air velocity on the insulation of air layer. See the air layer, boundary layer of the air, as long as it remains still, it has a certain insulation value. But when the velocity of the air is going to increase, then things are going to be different. In quiet air, air layers may have a thickness of almost 12 millimeter, the boundary air layer. With vigorous air motion as in storm, the thickness decreases to less than 1 millimeter. In general, there is a square root relationship between thickness and air motion. This there is a graph on the right hand side that shows air velocity and insulation of air layer how it is declining. Now, we go to two parameter model. This model takes care of dry heat transfer and moisture transfer as separate independent mechanism. So, the point is the the human body generates both dry heat as well as moisture and the moisture transfer also is equally important. It also takes away some body heat and the comfort sensation will also depend whether moisture transfer through the clothing is happening or not. So, while developing a model, we have to take care of both the aspects, only not only only heat, but also moisture. Now, heat is driven out because there has to be temperature difference. Similarly, moisture is driven out due to vapor pressure difference. So, that is the driving force. So, unless there is a vapor pressure difference between skin and the environment, the moisture we cannot move away from the skin. And now, liquid sweat on the skin evaporates and is transported through the clothing to the environment. So, there are some liquid sweat 
on the skin, but then there is a layer of fabric in front of it. If the sweat will also evaporate slowly and the vapor will pass through the fabric. If the sweat is too much, then sweat also gets transported into the fabric through wicking action. The resistance to this vapor transport is termed as intrinsic evaporative resistance. The partial vapor pressure at the skin is assumed to be saturated vapor pressure at skin temperature. So, two things we have to tackle dry heat and moisture and what drives away the heat is the temperature difference that is most important. Similarly, what will cause the moisture to move out from the skin to the environment? The vapor pressure difference also becomes important. So, the outside relative humidity, if it is very low, then the vapor pressure difference will be very high. So, in general in summer what happens? The relative humidity goes down, especially in dry region, in the dry uh, sessions. When the temperature is high and humidity is very, very low, in that case the body moisture can be transported very fast through the fabric. So, maximum evaporative heat loss from skin to air, this is evaporative heat loss not dry heat loss. It is due to the evaporation of moisture. So, now for a nude body the maximum Evaporative heat loss could be H E into P S K S minus P A. P S K S and P A, what are these? They are stated here. P S K S is saturated vapor pressure on the skin at skin temperature, and P A is the vapor pressure in the air. What is the vapor pressure in the environment? That is P A and vapor pressure. And next to the skin, that is saturated vapor pressure next to the skin at the skin temperature, that is PSKS, and HE is the evaporative heat transfer coefficient. So, reverse of that or reciprocal of that, 1 upon H is going to be 1 upon IEA. IEA is resistance to vapor pressure transfer. So, H E is the heat transfer coefficient and I E A is the resistance to vapor pressure transfer. So, E max is equal to H E P S K S minus P A or 1 upon I E A P S K S minus P A. So, in this case the, the picture shows model of the heated body showing resistance to moisture transfer through a layer of clothing insulation. Now, from there how to find out P S K S and P A, this to be, be important for us. Now, from this equation developed by the researcher and twins. The saturated vapor pressure at the skin temperature can be given by this equation. P S K S at the skin temperature, the saturated vapor pressure can be stated by this equation and the vapor pressure of air can be found out by another equation. So, both the equation have similar form and we can find out what are the uh, depending upon skin temperature we can and this is going to be the, the temperature of the skin there is little error here this would be T S K temperature of the skin. So, vapor pressure in air P A E to the power 18.956 minus 4030 divided by T A plus 235. 
So, these equations that are given, we can make use of the, this equation to find out the value of vapor pressures next to skin or on the skin and vapor pressure in the atmosphere. And these two are related by what is known as relative humidity. So, relative humidity is P A by P S A. If we know them, then we can find out what is E max. Now, there is another interesting relationship between H E and H C. So, H E is the evaporative heat transfer coefficient and H C is the convective heat transfer coefficient. Look at H E and H C. These two are connected by this formula which is known as Lewis ratio this formula. H E by H C is 16.5 this has been found out and therefore, what how does it help us this is going to help us in finding out H E by knowing H C. H C is the convective heat transfer coefficient. If we know that the ratio is 16.5, so H E is going to be 16.5 H C always. So, that is what it can help us. So, replacing H E by H C, we can write that the maximum evaporative heat transfer is going to be 16.5 A C into P S K S minus P A. So, we are replacing evaporative heat transfer coefficient by convective heat transfer coefficient. That is what this is and this gives us what could be the maximum heat, maximum heat heat loss could be because what could be the maximum evaporative heat loss. Now, the resistance to vapor transfer is like there is a resistance to heat transfer. Similarly, there will be resistance to vapor transfer also. Now, like air has a resistance to heat transfer, dry heat transfer, air has a resistance to vapor transfer as well. So, if H E is the evaporative heat transfer coefficient, then resistance to vapor transfer I E A, A stands for air, E is evaporative and I stands for insulation. So, insulation value of air to what? To evaporative heat transfer is how much? Is 1 upon H E because H E is the heat transfer coefficient. So, because there is, there is a uh, uh, no, reciprocal relationship is between these two. Now, I E when it will be clothed is going to be exactly same what happened in the case of dry heat transfer? It will be 1 upon H E into F C L. So, it is going to be I E A by F C L. F C L is coming because it is the increased surface area due to clothing. Now, the total resistance to vapor transfer. So, this is first of all this is resistance to air layer to vapor transfer without considering the increased surface area that is it is basically for first one is for a naked body. The second one is 12 lump is because due to body is clothed now, but it is the resistance of the air. Now comes there is a clothing material as shown here by this green part of the, on the diagram. So, this green rectangle is the layer of clothing which is there. So, it is also gives some resistance to the flow of or to the transfer of moisture vapor. Like air 
can give some resistance to the transfer of moisture vapor. Similarly, clothing also will give some resistance. So, total resistance is going to be how much? Is going to be resistance of the clothing, intrinsic resistance value plus resistance due to air layer i e a cloth both have to be added together to find out what is the total resistance of the resistance to vapor transfer or the clothing material of uh, uh, sorry the total resistance to vapor transfer of the air when it is from the from the from the body to the environment when the body is actually covered by some clothing material. See, so total resistance I E T, T stands for total is I E C L and I E A these two part and I am putting the value of I E C L is the whatever is the clothing resistance, intrinsic resistance to clothing and this is the resistance of the air this part is the resistance of the air, this is the resistance of the clothing and some of them is going to be the total resistance the clothing along with this boundary air layer. So, that is how we can find out now what is the total resistance to vapor transfer when the human body is covered by some layers of clothing. So, it is useful to define a unit of vapor permeation properties similar to clo value for dry insulation this could be one unit and this is this size 0 0.155 meter square kilo Pascal per watt for a typical clothing. Now, so, maximum heat loss from skin through clothing to the environment E max therefore, is going to be total resistance P s k s minus P a maximum heat loss from skin to environment which we did earlier equation number 7 and this is the equation 7 changes to 14. And what is the difference between these two? That here I am also taking care of I E A plus I E C L. This term has come here. This is the new term which has come here. So, uh, therefore, E max when only layer of air is there for a naked body and E max in this case is when the body is clothed that is going to be the evaporative heat transfer. Now, sometimes what happens the skin is not completely wet, skin wettedness W is used. What is W is given here? W is E by E max, what is the maximum possible provided the entire skin is covered by by liquid sweat. So, skin wettedness may vary if W indicates the wettedness factor which is E by E max then evaporative heat loss E is going to be W by 1 upon I E A plus I E C L. P s k s minus p that is 14 equation number four, equation number 14 the numerator gets replaced there is be one parameter which will come now w by w is going to be the skin wettedness factor. So, when the skin is completely wet w is going to be 1 otherwise there will be some value of w maybe it is 70 percent wet or it is maybe 30 percent or 80 percent accordingly W value will vary all right. Now, 
we come to another important concept that is moisture permeability index. So, what we have discussed till now one is dry heat transfer through clothing and the other one is evaporative heat transfer through clothing. This is what we have done. Now, another new concept is moisture permeability index. What is this? Clothing impedes evaporative heat transfer more than sensible heat transfer. Permeability index compares this property relative to that of air. How it is going to compare? Now, look at this moisture permeability index. What is this? Evaporative heat flow capability between skin and environment divided by sensible heat flow capability divided by Lewis ratio. We have written, we have seen earlier what is Lewis ratio. Lewis ratio is H E by H C. So, H E Lewis ratio is H E by H C. H E is evaporative heat transfer coefficient and H C is convective heat transfer coefficient. Ratio of these two is called Lewis ratio. And the top it, here it is just for the air. On the numerator now what we have a ratio which is evaporative heat flow capability between skin and environment and sensible heat flow capability. So, it is basically I m is going to be I 1 upon I e t 1 upon I t divided by L r and so that is basically means I t divided by I e t E stands for evaporative heat transfer. We have written it here I t is total resistance of air layer and clothing to dry heat transfer and I e t the total resistance of the air layer and clothing to water vapor transfer. So, that is the difference the E stands for evaporative heat transfer and if the E is not there it is total uh, if it is I t it is total insulation or total resistance. I is always means insulation that basically means in a way resistance. So, I e t is total resistance of the air layer and clothing because of the water vapor transfer and I t is same total resistance to dry heat and the ratio of these t is I t by I e t. So, when the clothing is there then what are these ratio? And when the clothing is not there, then what is the ratio? So, Lewis ratio is when there is no clothing between these two. So, this is what is Lewis ratio, and this ratio I m therefore becomes I t by L r into I. It is just writing the same thing in a different manner. And for a new subject, H E T and H E are same because there is no clothing. So, therefore, H E T and H E will be same in the case of mood subject because there is, is only for the air, there is no clothing there. So, H E T and H E therefore, they are same. So, moisture permeability index therefore, I m becomes I T by I E T L R, why I T is 1 upon H and I E T 1 upon H E T and what we can write now that I e t and I t we replace by H that is heat transfer coefficients. Its resistance values are replaced by heat transfer coefficient values. 
is just a reciprocal. So, therefore, we can write the same numerator as if it is h e t by h and loose ratio is h e by h c we know that. So, it becomes h e by h divided by h e by h c. So, h e t becomes h e y because they are same for a node person. And hence from here what we get that h e and h e will cancel we will be left with h c by h. And what is h? h is sum of h r plus h c. h is total heat transfer coefficient due to radiation R stands for radiation and C stands for convection. Radiation and convection put together it gives us the total heat transfer coefficient H R plus H C. So, therefore, moisture permeability index becomes this. Now, from here what is important from 17 is ratio of H C by H R plus H C. Mathematically, we can say the numerator will be always less than the denominator because denominator has an additional term H R. We have to add with H C, then only we get the denominator. That basically means I m value will be always less than 1 because numerator is always less than the denominator in equation 17. So, moisture permeability index will be always less than 1. For material impermeable to water vapor, I m is going to be 0 and for air H r too small in comparison to H c. Hence, I m for air is going to be H c by H c which is equal to almost 1. So, I m for air is almost going to be 1 because H r is too small in comparison to H c. I m is typically 0 0.5 for nude subjects, 0 0.4 for normal clothing and 0 0.2 for impermeable type of clothing. The clothing has highly impermeable type then it will be almost close to 0 0.2 I m value. These are some typical values uh, for normal clothing the I m value could be around 0 0.4. So, total clothing resistance to water vapor, what will be total resistance? Now, since I m equal to I t by I e t by L r, we have already written it and therefore, you can write I t by I e t into I m into L r and I e t therefore, becomes how much? It becomes I t divided by I m into L r is basically writing from the previous equations. So, from here this one we generate this and from this one we generate this. Now, what we do? We put the value of L r here 16.7 the equation is not actually not the same equation writing in a different way and there is now 6, 1 upon 16.7 is is becoming 0 0.06. So, it becomes 0 0.06 by I m and I t we have already calculated what is I t that is this. This whole term I a by F c L plus I c L is equal to I t the total resistance of the clothing including the air layer and therefore, I e t has become this much equation 8 in total evaporative heat transfer is related to permeability index if we know find out of the 
clothing material and we know I A value, F C L value and I C L value. Then we can calculate what is the evaporative heat transfer coefficient. So, this what is I E T, I E T we have writing it again because these terms you know it moves away from our mind. So, we have to repeatedly look at them to as to remember them. All right. So, total clothing resistance to water vapor is this I E T and we can write I E T as 0 0.06 by I M I A by F C L plus I C L. So, if I want to find it out and want to make use of these equations, I need to know the parameters I A, the value of I A, value of F C L, value of I C L and the value of I m for that fabric also, then we can find it out. We can either write it now I e t, I I it is also I E C L in plus I E A and therefore, is I E C L 1 upon I E A we have seen it already 1 upon H E F C L and therefore, it becomes this total body surface increases with the clothing layers. So, F C L value can vary between this limit, F C L will always get up than 1 and typically F C L could be between uh, 0 to 1 to 1 1.5 and I M value should be always less than 1, it is between 0 and 1, we have already said what is you know. Um, uh, I am 0 in the impermeable fabric, I am equal to 1 for wet surface in strong wind and therefore, I E T for most fabric I am equal to 0 0.38 or close to 0 0.4. Hence, I E T is going to be this and if I put the value of I am for most fabric 0 0.38 which is here it becomes 0 0.06 by 0 0.38. So, I E T becomes this now. Provided I know that the value of I M is 0 0.3. So, same equation we are only replacing it putting the value of I M for a normal fabric. This is has been people have found out using doing experiments and this is what we get. And with that we close this particular lecture. This is a little heavy lecture, one has to we go through the slides repeatedly in order to understand it clearly. Uh, in due course of time we will solve some numerical problems, so that now, then it will be reinforced in your mind. You have to understand that there is a dry heat which is getting transferred from transferred from human body to the environment through the clothing. So, we are trying to find out what is the resistance of the air first and what is the resistance of the clothing and then adding them together to find out the total resistance of the clothing with respect to dry heat. And same thing we are doing with respect to vapor also. What is resistance of the air to moisture transfer when a person is nude and then when it is clothed, then what is the resistance to vapor transfer? Because air will put some resistance to vapor transfer and fabric 
layer which is there, you are also going to put some Hebert transfer. So, both of them have to be taken together and then only we can find out what is the uh, in total insulation value or what will be the heat loss, dry heat loss or evaporative heat loss. Okay? Thank you. Thank you.